Hey, welcome back. A slash mime is widely accepted method or more precisely a protocol for sending digitally signed and encrypted email messages. After this video, you would be able to describe the use of S mime, describe digital signatures. You would be able to apply and verify a digital signature of a message and describe how message encryption work and perform encryption on messages as well. So without wasting any more time, let's get into it. So first let's understand what is S-MIME. S-MIME or S-MIME, which is known as Secure Multipurpose Internet Mail Extension is a protocol to digitally sign and encrypt email messages. It has achieved wide acceptance as the standard for message security. If your organization uses Exchange Online, you can set up XMIME. So what does SMIME do? SMIME is based on using certificates that work with a private key and a public key. This certificate needs to be issued by a trusted public certificate authority that can prove the keys are valid. Using those keys, you can append a digital signature to an email message or you can use that to encrypt an email message body and attachments as well. The both part of the certificate, the public key and the private key, works exclusively only together. If you sign a message with a private key, it can only be validated by using the public key and if somebody encrypts a message with a public key, it can only be decrypted with the private key. Therefore, you need to secure the private key at any time but you need to provide the public key to any corresponding partner you want to use S-MIME with and vice versa. Let's talk about S-MIME digital signatures. Digital signatures are the most commonly used service of S-MIME. As the name suggests, the digital signatures are the digital counterpart to the traditional legal signatures on a paper document. As with legal signature, digital signatures provide several security capabilities including authentication, non-repudiation, and digital integrity. So what are these terms? Let's talk about authentication. A signature serves to validate an identity. It verifies the answer to the question who you are by providing a means of differentiating that entity from all others and providing its uniqueness. Because there is no authentication in SMTP email, there is no way to prove the sender's identity on a message. Authentication in a digital signature solves this problem by allowing a recipient to know that a message was sent by the person or organization who claims to have sent the message. Another capability is non-repudiation. The uniqueness of a signature prevents the owner of the signature from disowning the signature. This capability is called non-repudiation. Thus, the authentication that a signature provides gives the means to enforce non-repudiation. The concept of non-repudiation is most familiar in the context of paper contracts. A signed contract is a legally binding document and it is impossible to disown an authenticated signature. Digital signatures provide the same function and increasingly in some areas are recognized as legally binding like signature on paper. The last capability is data integrity. An additional security service that digital signatures provide is data integrity. Data integrity is a result of a specific operations that make digital signatures possible. With data integrity services, when the recipient of a digitally signed email message validates the digital signature, the recipient is assured that the email message that is received is in fact the same message that was signed and sent and has not been altered while in transit. Any alteration of the message while in transit after it has been signed invalidates the signature. In this way, digital signatures can provide an assurance that signatures on paper cannot because it is possible for a paper document to be altered after it has been signed. Please note that Although digital signatures provide data integrity, they do not provide confidentiality. 
let's look at what are the steps which is involved when you apply digital signatures and how it looks like when you verify a digital signature when the recipient opens a digitally signed email message a verification procedure is performed on the digital signature to ensure the sender's identity and consistency of the message to perform the verification the attached digital signature must be decrypted to retrieve the checksum of the original message a checksum of the clear text body of the message is then granted and compared to the decrypted checksum if both checksums match the message was not altered during the transport and therefore verified and the second result of verifying the digital signature is to provide identity of the sender it is possible to decrypt the message signature with the public key of the sender as well then it proves that the message was encrypted with the secret private key that is exclusively in proposition of the sender so what are these steps involved in verifying this digital signature this is an example which summarizes the steps involved in verifying the digital signature first the message is received then the digital signature containing encrypted hash value is retrieved from the message and the message is retrieved the next step is the hash value of the message is calculated and the sender's public key is retrieved from the email then encrypted hash value is decrypted with the sender's public key then the decrypted hash value is compared against the hash value produced on recipient and finally if the values match the message is validated let's talk about the smi messages message encryption provides a solution to information disclosure smtp based internet email does not secure the content of email messages therefore it can be read by anyone who sees it as the message travels or view them where it is stored so encryption is a way to change the content so that it cannot be read or understood un until it is changed back into a readable and understandable form although message encryption is not as widely used as digital signatures it does address what many perceive as the most serious weakness in internet email message encryption so what are these serious weaknesses there are two first one is confidentiality and then data integrity so what is confidentiality message encryption serves to protect the content of the email message only the intended recipient can view the contents and the contents remain confidential and cannot be known by anyone else who might receive or view the message and encryption provides confidentiality while the message is in transit and in storage another feature is data integrity as with digital signatures message encryption provides data integrity services because of the specific operations that make encryption possible please note that the message is encrypted by utilizing the recipient's public key which is available to everyone thus message encryption does not provide authentication and therefore does not provide known reputation although message encryption provides confidentiality it does not authenticate the message sender in any way let's talk about encryption and decryption first let's understand how encryption work message encryption makes the content of a message unreadable by, by performing an encryption operation on it when it is sent when the message is received the text is made readable again by performing a decryption operation when the message is read This is an example diagram which shows what I just talked about. Please note that to send an encrypted message to a recipient, you first need the recipient's public key. Let's talk about decryption. When the recipient opens an encrypted message, a decryption option is performed on the encrypted message. The encrypted message and the recipient's unique information are both retrieved. The recipient's unique information is then used in a decryption operation. performed against the encrypted message this operation returns the unencrypted message which is then shown to the recipient if the message has been altered in transit the decryption operation will fail or oh, here is an example graphic which displays the sequence of steps involved in decrypting an email message the process of encrypting and decrypting messages provide for the confidentiality of the email messages
This process addresses a serious weakness in internet email, the fact that everyone can read any message. Let's talk about how digital signatures and encryption working together. When digital signatures and message encryption are used together, users benefit from both services. Employing both services in message does not change the handling or processing of either service. To show how digital signatures and message encryptions are handled together, you can have a look at this following diagram which includes all the steps and the sequence involved in signing and encrypting an email message. So what are triple wrapped messages? One of the enhancements in the latest version of S-MIME in version 3 is known as triple wrapping. A triple wrapped S-MIME messages is one that is signed encrypted and then signed again. This extra layer of encryption provides an additional layer of security. When users sign and encrypt messages with Outlook on the web by using S-MIME control, the message is automatically triple wrapped and Outlook does not triple wrap messages but it can read them. That concludes the lesson on S-MIME. In the next episode, we are going to talk about Office 365 message encryption. So I will see you on the next one. Till then, take care.